All right, so today is Thursday, September the 6th, uh, 2012. Check. It looks check, like, check. Uh, looks like the uh, recorder's running here. So I'm... Got the light flashing. Yeah, I'm sitting here talking with uh, Clint Evans about, uh, I call it the uh, cure in the candy bar effect. Emotional so, eating, basically, with women. We were talking about a bit of a case study, a client who had gotten a fight with her brother, and the first thing was to go go gobble a king size bar. stickers. Yeah. So where did that come from? Well, How'd that get wired up? And how yeah. So I mean, up? if if you think about it, usually if uh, if especially if a woman's under stress, if you look at what they typically tend to eat, um, there's a reason they eat what they eat, and it's really simple: is that when you're under stress, whether it's um, any kind of uh, strongly or intensely uh, charged contractive emotion in other words on the emotive scale or the feeling scale you've got the the emotions like love and joy that expand and then you've got things like fear and anger and um, uh, apathy and grief that contract and when those contractive emotions uh, begin to ramp up and begin to to gain energy or speed or tra uh, really trajectory because you know trajectory runs at an angle so you got right. speed a long time and then it intensifies and so it's not a flat line angle it's a it's a, a rising like logarithmic angle and so what happens is there there's a certain point uh, a person uh, reaches in that uh, exponential or logarithmic trajectory that at that point they exceed their ability to um, have the uh, uh, nutrient reserves basically be accessible and online to help them deal with whatever emotion they've got going on. So in other words, so they that, exhaust that their hormone reserves. infusion is gone. overwhelms the nutrients and just keeps on charging forward. Well, yeah, it's like you have one set of chemicals that that is uh, in. It's it's like injecting. Um, you know, some sort of toxin into your system. Like if you get a snake bite, your body has to respond to that. And contractive emotions are like snake bites. That's pretty darn, that's a darn right. good analogy, right? Where's, what's the anti-venom? Anti so the anti-venom is... Emotional anti-venom, there you the, go. The anti-venom is pretty simple. And I'll, I'll tell you the, the, the general equation that is both for um, hormones and neurotransmitters is first you've got to have a precursor. So that's a, like a, a raw material of uh, typically adaptogenic substance, which would be an adaptogen is a food that when the sun goes up and your serotonin registers that the sun, you know, it's getting real lighter outside, then you feel energized. And when the serotonin systems uh, see uh, darkness coming, in other words, the luminescence is decreasing, then they help you relax and ramp down so you switch from activity mode into regeneration mode. Because there's only really two modes we're running. We're either in active mode or regen mode. That's just that's the only two modes there are. And so um, the that first substance that those precursors are key because you can't build a hormone without precursor. It's impossible. And then the next thing is you've got to have vitamin C. And this ain't you know fake ascorbic acid vitamin C because ascorbic acid ain't never nor will it ever be uh, vitamin C. So you can't just suck on an orange. You can. That's oh, real vitamin C. Oh, that ain't vitamin, or, that ain't a you know ascorbic or a you know ascorbate or ascorbate. Talking about a horse pill that you buy at the store. No, no. They, yeah. Here's the rule of thumb: is you know that it's good for you if you can freaking go out in your backyard or someplace on the backside of Hana, Hawaii or Hana, Maui, and pick it off a tree. And I ain't never seen no horse pills growing on trees. So. No, don't see any capsules dangling from the leaves. Uh, no. In, in fact, the only capsules that uh, you know you might and I have got. 50 plus years of vegan raw fooding between us and the only capsules of stuff we really take are uh, digestive enzymes and probiotics because that they're simpler to have access to in that form and everything else we pretty much get in its um, you know it's the most natural uh, natural state we can get it in the most pristine natural state uh, form you like the probiotics as opposed to kefir or some well, you can do that. I mean, if you if you have the time to make, uh, you know, your own sauerkraut, which is better. I mean, we do both. We, we do uh, all sorts of fermented vegetables uh, and also um, uh, probiotics in capsule form, too, because the challenge is, you know, if you were living uh, a thousand years ago on, you know, Kauai, picking fruit and laying around the sun, you know, pondering your navel, wondering what to do, <laughs> right. then you'd Life be all right. Bro. Life's good, yeah. 
<laughs> so anyway, I mean, if you're living, you know, in a tropical paradise a thousand years ago when you got no stress, it's all good. If you're living in the middle of, uh, you know, New York where, you know, the temperature drops to sub-zero, yeah, you, you, you know, you're going to have to have some with, with water. Smog, with, with water, they tell you, is world class, but, you know, you know. tap water. Anyway, so um, so the first piece of the the, the uh, hormone neurotransmitter equation is precursor, and that's just dense adaptogenic material. The next step is uh, vitamin well, C. On the what are we talking? How do we get those? No, well, I'll get to that. Okay. I mean, I'm just going to run Sense. through the equation okay. first. And so, Good. just to wrap up on vitamin C, if you take uh, fake vitamin C, what that does is attach to the real vitamin C receptors and block the uptake of real vitamin C. So, guess what's in every freaking processed food on the planet? fake vitamin C because it's a dirt cheap, skanky old, crufty preservative. All right, so, so the, that's a clogger. Yeah, it's a clogger. Yourself right. up. So you basically block your uptake of real vitamin C and most people have so little intake of real vitamin C anyway, they're in a real jam. So uh, precursor, vitamin C, and then the last thing is metabolic enzymes. So those are, enzymes are like a catalytic converter in your muffler. You never burn up the, catal the catalyst material or the catalyst material burns up really slow. In other words, a catalyst can go through, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of uh, chemical reactions, and you have to have the catalyst to basically kickstart it, uh, like a spark. a spark plug. Yeah, it's yeah, a like, spark that starts. Yeah, like spark. like a catalyst would be a spark plug in a car. You put gasoline in a cylinder and you compress the cylinder, and then the spark plug fires that spark, and that sparks the catalyst. And so the spark plug may run for, you know, at this point, freaking probably a year, run 10 years. I don't know how long mm -hmm. spark plugs last. That's what God made dealerships for, Quite is to well. change my yeah, spark plugs. Exactly. Um, and so a catalyst, uh, you've got to have a catalyst to actually kick off the whole uh, uh, equation. Now, the challenge with metabolic enzymes is what produces metabolic enzymes in your body? Your pancreas. Okay. All right. So guess what happens if your pancreas is having to produce things like leukocytes to deal with cooked and processed food all day long? You I would say it's got a certain reserve of energy, yep. and if some of it's being diverted to that, then... Well, it's even worse because it's really, the pancreas is a pretty simple mechanism. It's almost a binary mechanism. It either produces metabolic enzymes or leukocytes, which some people call digestive enzymes incorrectly. Um, because uh, if you look at um, like uh, Pottinger's Cats is a fantastic book to read about what happens when you eat cooked food. Uh, for the for the advanced here that like to really get on track with your health, read uh, find a copy of Pottinger's Cats on uh, Amazon. Um, well, that's one of my most prized books in my collection. Is the little it's only a you know really short little book. And Pottinger went through this iteration of where he uh, worked with cats over generation after generation and monitored what happened as he was feeding them cooked food. Fascinating. So anyway, so your, your pancreas can either produce uh, metabolic enzymes, which can uh, build hormones and, and uh, neurotransmitters so you feel good, or you're dealing with cooked and processed food. One so of the two. The metabolic is the regenerative and the others... Kind well, of the metabolic enzymes are actually what your pancreas is supposed to produce. You're only supposed to produce leukocytes when there's some sort of foreign invader in your body. Oh, that's supposed yeah. to, you know, that's an immune response. So your your pancreas isn't meant to stay full on in immune response mode all the time, which is what happens when people eat cooked and processed food, mm. and they wonder why they, you know, feel awful. Well, you know, it's because their pancreas can't do anything that's else. The regeneration side. Yeah. So okay. So those are the three pieces, and then um, uh, the other really um, sort of uh, big component of hormones and neurotransmitters is we kind of talked a little bit earlier about is uh, uh, essential fatty acids so that's kind of the the bulk of a hormone you, you got to have um, you've got to have a pretty high level of essential fatty acid high quality oils and uh, also you've uh, got to have um, uh, high quality water in your system right and you've also got to have high quality salt in your system because salt, your... yeah, salt is a substance that holds water in your system. So without salt, water, and enzymes, you might as well forget it. So if you're eating a crack, one of these crank low salt diets, that's insane. Mm -hmm. Every farmer knows. That ain't even salt, is it? No, I mean you, know, you can't buy. You can't like I would never buy salt out of a store. You, there's no way to get decent salt at a store. I've never seen any because salt is next to water it's the most it's the second most important substance that we ingest 
uh, water is the first, salt is the second. And so every farmer knows if you, you, the first thing you do with a field of animals is you take a salt block or a big liquid salt, you know, that has the little wheel that rolls, that rolls the liquid up and the, the cows lick it. Because if you don't put a salt block or a salt lick out there, then the, the animals will uh, crib. They'll chew the bark off trees, they'll paw at the ground with their hooves and eat dirt. Uh, if there's any rusty farm equipment, they will find it and they will lick the rust off of the rusty farm equipment. Uh, it's intense. Is rust salty? Yeah, rust is a mineral. Oh. It's, uh, of course, you end up with uh, iron oxide Nasty poisoning. Side then. Effects, yes. Yeah, you know, so you know that's like uh, taking these uh, uh, iron supplements or eating those black olives that the second or the the two ingredients on the can or the three ingredients on black olive can is black olives, uh, ferrous oxide. Which is rust. Sounds nasty. And yeah. water. Ferrous iron. Yeah, so, fer you know, if you'd like to make black olives like you buy from the store, you get you some real black olives and cram them in a can with a bunch of rusty nails and leave them for a while. In a metal can, yeah. Yeah, in a metal can, preferably. Hopefully aluminum, too. No, I apologize. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Let's don't, get that stuff yeah, leaching out, Don't it? do that. So, um, so those are the, the big components. Uh, we covered um, the precursor, the... Vitamin C, uh, the um, uh, metabolic enzymes, and then essential fatty acids and salt and water. Uh, and also, if you think the pink salt that you're buying is good out of the stores, that health salt, think again, because the reason we package and sell our own pink salt now is that we ran assays on all the pink salt that we could find. Which is a test. Yeah, an assay is a chemical analysis to tell what is actually in a product. Because, you know, just because you go into black hole foods and buy something off the shelf, I don't mean that it's, uh, you should be eating it, right? Right. 99% like of everything in black hole foods you should never put near your body. You probably shouldn't even put in your garden. Mm. And so what we did is we, we assayed all these pink salts and what we found was um, uh, black hole foods is a, uh, a, a generalized term for all health food stores. It's not meant to speak about any specific... A particular brand. No, 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 no. We're more black hole as in space black hole. Well, more like if you go there, you'll get sucked into the black hole of death and disease. Yes. Uh, if you're so foolish as to walk in, you know, most people walk in places like Black Hole Foods and they look at all the stuff on the shelves and they think it's food. That's the first mistake. Or neighborhood grocery store. Yeah. Next so, layer down. Um, uh, so um, uh, the pink salt, we assayed all the pink salt and we found that it had huge amounts of nickel. Sometimes hundreds to uh, uh, hundreds of times the, the uh, OSHA recommended levels of nickel. Recommended. Yeah. Uh, the, in that. other words, recommended means that if you've got a manufacturing plant, you can't exp if you if you expose your workers to this level of uh, nickel, then we'll fine you or shut you down or send you to jail, depending on how bad. So, but but it's the just salt that term recommended that yeah, well, people would actually listen to about, any amount. How about accepted? Uh, acceptable. <laughs> So uh, not go to jail levels. Yeah. So anyway, so the we we assayed all these pink salts, including the the brands we were selling, and they had nickel in them. And come to find out, the reason for that is that all the grinders that grind all this pink salt up in the Himalayan region are made out of nickel. nickel. All right. So guess what happens when you take soft nickel grindstones and you rub them on hard as glass salt, salt rocks. Crystals. The salt rocks actually grind the nickel down, so you end up with salt and nickel, which is, you know, it's bad. Flakes off right into your salt batch. Yeah, so, uh, and it atomizes, so it's very easily absorbed, it's very bad. So um, uh, now the question becomes, what's a precursor? That's the, that's the big one. So precursors, adaptogens are, uh, here's the way to, to really tell what the, the uh, most beneficial adaptogens are. You pick the, the uh, substances that have the worst reputation in the marketplace. So here they are. There is uh, chocolate. No, they, these, are, these are actually adaptogens. So, oh, salt, okay. so salt would be a, just a pure mineral. An adaptogen is going to have a physiological effect rather than just a sort of a passive effect. These are more active effects. So chocolate's the first one. Uh, guarana, which is, you know, gringos call it guarana. Uh, yerba mate, um, mahuang, which is ephedra. Uh, and. Oh, yeah, is that ephedrine? That's got a bad rep. Yeah, and um, th those are uh, those are the most commonly. There are a few uh, other odd. Uh, what about the caffeine and chocolate? Well, I'll get to that. Oh, well, probably the other really. Uh, uh, the other really uh, common one is green tea, also. That tends to have That's a lot a bad of caffeine. Rep? 
Oh, yeah, caffeine, well, yeah. a lot of it. Yeah, so the thing about caffeine is there's two kinds of caffeine. Here's the way you test the quality of caffeine. If you can, uh, like I drink the chocolate bliss that we package with guarana in it, usually I have like, you know, four to eight ounces before I go to bed. You add extra or it's in the blend? No, I, I actually add guarana to mine. Extra, okay. Yeah. And so um, I, I actually drink that right before bed because it deepens my sleep. Because remember, adaptogens, when it's dark, if you ingest an adaptogen, it'll say, oh, it's dark. I'm supposed to support sleep and cellular regeneration and memory consolidation and all that stuff that's supposed to go on when you're in downtime. And so if, on the other hand, you take it and you feel stimulated, then that's really what it is. It's more methamphetamines. In fact, I refused to sell any of these products for years and years. And I had a woman that was one of our suppliers uh, challenge me. She said, here's the way you tell if you got good uh, uh, warana. She said, you take a teaspoon and you just uh, eat it and just rinse it down with water before you go to bed. I'm like, hey, no way I'm going to do it's that. Psychotic. I won't I be freaking be, I'll be crawling on the ceiling for, you know, three days if I do that. And That'll sure enough, like ecstasy deal. Sure enough, I did it and, and I, bam, just passed out. And that was when I learned that there's a difference between the quality of caffeine. And here's the, here's the way that caffeine becomes denatured or goes from an adaptogen to a stimulant. I figured there was is a you, burn process. You burn, it, you, you burn it multiple times and treat it with all sorts of chemical solvents. So you no longer have an adaptogen anymore. You've got a, a synthetic or a um, refined or denatured stimulant. Franken caffeine. Okay. Franken, Franken caffeine, yeah. So... Um, and so the, uh, back to the original. So the reason people uh, reach for chocolate bars, about demonizing yeah, the, chocolate the candy bar effect, like, for example, um, most people, if they had a fight with their, you know, a, a somebody they were intimate relationship with, they wouldn't go eat a pear or uh, even a donut, usually. Sometimes they might eat that just to, to ramp their body down to, like, put themselves to sleep. That would be more like an alcoholic sort of deal, though, where you're trying to depress your neurology. When people go after chocolate, which is the most prevalent thing a person will reach for, what they're really doing is that their body has said, yo, dude, or girl, hmm. gal or guy, you are running low on precursor and you are moving, you have moved from, from uh, a quiescent sort of equilibrium into fight or flight. And so you're burning up uh, precursor at such a rapid pace that I've got to have more precursor to deal with your emotional state. So you got two options. Well, actually, there's three options. You can either uh, suspend your uh, feeling. You you manage your feelings. You say, well, you know, honestly, ten years from now, am I even going to remember this day? And the answer is no. Right. So what the you know you know what? get get the you know, over it. Don't right? sweat the small shit. It's yeah, all don't, small shit. Don't sweat the small stuff because it don't matter. Even a week from now, you probably won't remember it. So first thing is learn how to manage your uh, emotions. And the way you manage your, your feeling world is to become present. Because the, when, you're, when you're in this moment, everything's good and you're at peace. If you're remembering the past or projecting some future that I guarantee ain't never going to happen the way you imagine it, then you have left the present. You've either gone backwards or forwards, you're out of the present, and now your monkey mind can create massive stress to burn up precursors. So the first thing is you uh, learn to be present. And the simple way to be present is just focus, focus on your breathing and breathe. Just breathe and listen to your breath, feel your breath through your throat, and it, you know in a few seconds you'll be present. Uh, the other thing is you... Um, you can, you know, allow your emotions to run rampant and you can eat chocolate. Now, my suggestion is uh, rather than either one of those, you do the third option, which is you become present and have some chocolate. But have, you know, high grade chocolate like I always keep a gallon the of chocolate. plus option, not either or. Yeah, I, what I do is I keep a gallon of chocolate bliss in my fridge all the time and I just sip on the stuff all day long. I mean, that's the, that's the nice, way I manage it. level. Yeah. And so that's the reason, That's the reason, especially women, because women's hormonal systems are far more complex than men. Thank God. And so that's why, that's why, yeah. 
God love the <laughs> Thank our you. women. Thank you for making me yes, a man. Yes. I, I am too weak to be a woman. I apologize. <laughs> I, I have just I don't uh, envy the uh, birthing process or any of that. No, whole I've just bashed. System. I've just uh, bashed and uh, ratted out my whole gender, and <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm I'm a traitor. The yeah. uh, monthly bleeding, I mean, all that whole situation. It's, no. it's rough. Um, so that, I mean, that's the, the bottom line is empathy, that, empathy. that people people typically reach for an adaptogenic, a dense adaptogenic uh, food source when they're running low on um, uh, precursor to build hormones and neurotransmitters because that's kind of the first bulk material that's required. Only problem is if you reach for chocolate that you get from any store, then you what say you quote chocolate. Yeah, I quote chocolate because here, and this is what we'll wrap up with, uh, chocolate ain't chocolate. So chocolate, real chocolate is, um, you know, it's has been- It's a bean, pro- right? Well, it's a bean, but it's a, the chocolate that we import, we actually have a, you know, a custom uh, crafting process that we go through where we um, you know it's fermented completely it's never heated it's it's uh, uh, just ambient air fermented and it's fermented until the bacteria completely completes its cycle and then the bacteria all die that's why if you get you know if you find cacao like in a bulk bin at your local black hole foods like here's a fun thing to do is smell it if it smells like fungus, sniff, sniff the bean instead of sniff the finger. Well, if you like, you sniff chocolate powder or chocolate nibs, which are the little crust particles or beans, and they smell like fungus. Guess what? They are. Don't eat that. That ain't chocolate. Mm. That's just you know skanky old fungus. It's it's a it's a form of chocolate that has been um, rushed through the fermentation process, where now those that material has come in contact with some ambient uh, moisture and heat. And now it's growing fungus on it again. So you don't want to eat that. That's no bad. So what we do is we the our, we let our, our um, uh, beans ferment fully, and then we uh, crush them slightly and blow off all the shell material, which is um, like if you eat a whole bean, the shell actually has a a form of caffeine that is uh, very stimulating. So when a bean when a bean starts to ferment, all the caffeine is in the bean, none's in the shell. And as it ferments, all the caffeine that is, um, we'll say, antagonistic, um, it's a central neural system um, uh, antagonist, that moves out to the shell. So if you crush it and blow that off, the caffeine that's left in the bean is very adaptogenic. If, on the other hand, you take that shell material and crush it up and, you know, don't be doing lines of that, buddy. That, yeah, it's, that's going to be rough, buddy. <laughs> you bounce it off the walls yeah, and so, maybe crash hard. And I'm sure that, you know, they don't throw that stuff away. They probably just take the shell material they blow off ours and put it in the next batch and mix it up and sell it to the next um, guy. Oh, man. And so um, uh, that's the uh, real chocolate is uh, has never been heated, never been roasted. It's been fully fermented so that they're, it, it can't go into that fungus cycle again. Uh, and uh, it's never been alkalized. Uh, the processing plants we work with won't even accept alkalized chocolate, which means that it's been processed with some low-grade um, mineral. You can search online; it's a bigger oh, conversation that's than right versus, now. Than acid versus alkaline, because alkaline is good. Uh, yeah. So, so in fact, there's a product in the market right now which I won't mention the name of, but it's got. Uh, if you look at the ingredients, it's got five types of milk. Uh, and the chocolate is the the dreckiest. Is there some bald eagle milk? I mean, you got goat. Well, no, you got different forms. You've got oh. like straight caseinate and whey and all these different oh, forms of milk. Okay. So there, and and each one of those forms, as you as you refine milk down, you actually increase the sugar content too. So it's really five forms of milk sugar. Right. And then the chocolate Without they the used in the natural digestive enzymes. Yeah, and the know. chocolate they use in it, they they specifically state it's alkalized chocolate. So they're using the worst ingredients on the planet, and they're selling it as a um, uh, you know like a protein powder, a supplement. Oh, I a thought cure-all. you were going to say it was a luxury chocolate bar, like a, oh no, one of those high end chocolate bars. Well, humans. it's a it's a high end uh, protein supplement. So you know you got to be really careful about uh, just because somebody says something is uh, you know the best. Uh, health food whatever don't mean that it is yeah trust is a big issue is how do you know 
Oh, and what's they, food yeah. source and trust the source, and, and they, this they is even really have, natural. They even have a name that sort of lends itself to it being a trustworthy. Pro- it's really just. Oh, this bad. is. Uh, don't say it. Don't say it, man. Not on the recording. Whatever. So appro- uh, approved by the certain agency. Well, no. Anyway, we'll <laughs> we'll pa- move on. Did that to answer the questions about the reaching for the candy bar? I call it the candy bar. Curing the yeah. candy bar effect. So basically, get a little perspective. Come back into yourself. Do some breathing to hopefully stunt or blunt that infusion of hormone, stress, cortisol, whatever's going yeah. on. And then if you've got some chocolate bliss handy. Yeah. And I do that about every 15, 20 minutes a day. Have a nice Yeah, swig, that's what I do. Have a good even burn all day long. Yep. And that'll also, um, as you... Uh, I've been cutting mine off at about 8 p.m. because it makes me mentally very hyperactive. Yeah, so I mean, I everybody's a little caffeine, different. but maybe not. Well, it, it If I could, drink it later, I find that it does tend to keep me up. Well, what you might do is you might try to um, uh, make sure that you're uh, managing your mental process, too. And so if Very you, key. I if, you, if I'm doing high active, like I'm writing or doing a lot of yeah, intense I mean, reading instead of just yeah. chilling out vegging in front of a TV show. Yeah, I mean, if you watch out. the TV or, or read a novel or something, my guess is that you might have a different experience. Okay. So... Did that was that good about the yeah. cure and the candy bar effect? For sure. Woo-hoo. And but they still get to eat chocolate. That's the key. Oh yeah, and that in Ladies, fact, you still can eat chocolate, just real chocolate. Yeah, real chocolate. So you know, have a good uh, stiff uh, drink of chocolate bliss and, <laughs> stiff, and breathe deep. A good stiff drink. Yeah, of chocolate a good bliss. stiff drink. Yeah. So don't you know give up the booze, switch to chocolate. Right. We'll have to talk about the alcoholics. What's really going on there, and instead of. AA. Oh yeah, that actually AA is effective. Yeah, no offense if you're in AA, uh, it's a crock, and I can say that because I went to AA meetings and NA meetings and all sorts of AA meetings for years until I finally figured out that they're tr- well. Anyway, they're trying to address a physiological problem with a emotional or psycho spiritual lever. Like if you That's try to move a move, if you try to move a physical boulder, you better have a physical lever because you can't go out there and like. Use the secret. Use the force. Use the secret David. of the force. I will. I will move you. Good luck. You let me know how that works. These aren't the droids. You're looking These for. aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, I like the community aspect and the accountability aspect. They're doing that right, but like you said, yeah. the rest of it is not solving the physical and physical. No, you got. You got to. You got to move the physical boulder first before you deal with the um, uh, the feelings and psycho spiritual. And you may find not, that once you. Uh, what is it? On the wagon, or which one's off? On the off? on the wagons when you're doing good. good. Off okay. the wagon, off is, yeah, you like fell off the turnip. Or backslide. Okay. Right. So. Off the wagon, you're tumbling and rolling. And yeah. So that's a that's gotcha. a that's another good one we can do sometime. For sure. Awesome.